Hey guys, how are you? Thanks so much for spending a little time with me today. I wanted to share with you guys foundation tips that I've learned in the past year watching YouTube, watching makeup artists and, you know, the beauty community on here. And, you know, I think these are tips that are game changers and for me allowed me to apply foundation and have it look pretty decent for somebody who really didn't have any experience before a year ago. So I am excited to share these tips with you. I think they're super helpful and yeah, we'll just get right into it. As you can see, my eye makeup is done and my lips are done, which in this case is just a lip liner. And my sunscreen has been sitting for a while now. Usually you want 10 to 15 minutes on that. So before we actually get started in applying foundation, the first thing we wanna think about is what kind of skin do we have? Do you have dry skin or oily skin or combination skin? In my case, I have combination. So I have an oily T-zone, which is this area here, and normal skin on the perimeter. So typically my concerns are mattifying the T-zone and keeping the perimeter dewy. That's, that's my preference and, you know, that's based on my skin type. So knowing your skin type is definitely important. It's going to help you in choosing a foundation. So if you have oily skin, more than likely, you're not going to go for a super radiant foundation. So when you're looking at foundations, when you go to buy them, look at what their claims are, look at some reviews on YouTube, or at least that's what I do, to see you know, what people are saying about that foundation. Now, not only do you wanna know what people are saying about that foundation, but you wanna know what people are saying that have your same skin issues so that you have an idea of how it may perform on you. There's so many variables with, you know, what skin type you have and what foundations do what, but also what foundations do what on each individual person. So, you know, I think everything that you hear, you always just take it with a grain of salt. And if you're inclined to still try that foundation, try it. You, you never know, it may be perfectly fine on you, even though someone else it, it didn't work well for. But if you can find people that give advice based on, you know, similar issues that you may be facing, you're already, starting in the right direction. The one nice thing that you can do if you do find that there's a foundation that doesn't necessarily fit or address the issues that you like to have addressed in a foundation is you can always use primers to change how the foundation looks and you can always mix foundations. So, you know, if you have a really matte foundation that you love you know, the coverage that it gives you, but it always ends up being a little too matte, maybe add a dewy foundation to it and change how that ends up looking. So you, you have options, even though it may not be exactly, you know, what you're looking for. All right, the next thing to think about when you're purchasing or going to use a foundation is what color are you gonna choose? So, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and I'm gonna leave it to, you know, the beauty gurus on YouTube as far as helping you determine what color to choose. But things to think about are, what is your undertone? Are you neutral? Do you lean warm? Do you lean cool? There are a lot of um, YouTube videos to help you figure that out. And the other thing that you want to think about with a color choice is, does it match my face? Does it match my neck? And does it match my chest? I really struggle with that because my neck is lighter and maybe not so much right now in winter, but it is lighter than my face and my chest. The other issue that goes along with that is when I apply a foundation that is as light as my neck to my face, I end up looking kind of ghostly. So I kind of have to do something in between this color and this color. Good news is my 
chest is similar in color to my face so getting something that goes in between my face and my neck is going to also blend in with my chest so once we know what color we're going with now we get to think about what primer we're going to use and if we're going to use a primer some people don't believe in primers but i happen to think that there are primers that definitely can address some issues that you may have now if you are just wanting to look dewy and you're not wanting to fill any pores in or you're not um trying to mattify then just use a moisturizer I, I think that that'll be totally effective but when you start looking at mattifying and pore minimizing and really getting a foundation to you know stay on longer or look a little bit more smooth then I definitely would be looking at what primers would work best for those issues now the other thing to think about with primers again is what issues do you face and what does your foundation do? So is, if it's a mattifying foundation, then maybe I don't need to use a mattifying primer um, or vice versa. If it's a dewy foundation, maybe I don't need to use a dewy primer. So in today's case, I am using a mattifying foundation and it is by LA Girl. It's their Pro Matte High Definition Long Wear Matte Foundation. It looks like this. And I'm still in the middle of testing it out. And what I have found is it, it does start to separate kind of at the end of the day in my T-zone. And I don't know if it's my oils or if it's just the foundation. So today I wanted to go in with a primer that I really trust which is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. Um, it looks like it also has sunscreen in it, but I already have my own sunscreen, so I'm not really worried about it, but that's what that looks like. And because it is a matte foundation, but I really like to keep a, um, a dewy perimeter, I'm gonna go in with the Laneige Glowy Makeup Serum on the perimeter to keep that nice and, and glowy. So we'll go ahead and start with applying the primer. And the one thing that you want to do with primer is apply it uh, with a patting motion or like a pressing motion, motion. So we'll start with the Laneige Glowy Serum. And also the other thing with primer is a little bit goes a long way. So I took, I don't know, it's less than a pea size there. We'll rub that in and we'll rub, pat it into the areas that I like to keep very dewy, which is mostly the cheeks and up here. And if you want it to look more dewy then just add a little bit more you could add a little bit more to your high points there which I think I may do so I'm just going to take a little bit more pat that in okay and then I always keep a little towel handy so that I can wipe my hands or clean a brush now we're going to take the mineral veil primer and we're going to go in the t-zone we'll blend it out that much and then again we are going to put that in the area that we want to stay matte and help the foundation adhere. And that is determining what kind of tool to use to apply your foundation. So typically I use a brush and then I'll follow it up with a beauty sponge. Sometimes it's just a beauty sponge. You kind of have to play with foundation to know what that foundation does best with or how you want it to look. You know, if it looks good with a foundation and there's no 
streaks of the brush and it looks natural or as natural as you like it, then great, you're good with a brush. If you want it to look more natural, generally using a sponge afterwards or only using a sponge is gonna be helpful in achieving that more natural look. Some people use a very fluffy smaller brush and they can still achieve that more natural look. Um, I haven't really mastered that yet, but with this foundation and with quite a few matte foundations or more fuller coverage foundations, I do find that going in with a sponge just makes it look uh, more natural. And the other thing that I typically use for all my foundations is um, this little, I guess, palette, and I just squirt like two pumps, one or two pumps onto the palette, and then I'll tap my beauty sponge into it and then just go around my face. I will pat, I don't drag this around because I don't want to move my primer. So, and then I just find that you'll get a little bit more even coverage that way. So that's what we're going to do. The other thing that I always like to do is give the foundation a little shake. And side note, some foundations do best with just applying it with your fingers. So I haven't tried that way of putting on a foundation. Um, so, so the next thing we're going to think about when we start to apply this is applying it to your areas of concern. So throughout my time of watching videos on YouTube on how to apply foundation, a lot of them said, start in the center and work your way out. So you don't have like a line of demarcation where your foundation is. And But I don't find that to be effective. Um, my issue is texture in my, my T-zone, I guess more specifically here, but also a little bit here. And when I start with my foundation in the center of my face and blend out, I feel like it always ends up looking cakey and emphasizing that texture. So I actually start in the area that I want the most coverage. And then once I have less product, I will work into the center, really trying to make it as thin of a layer as possible in this area. The other key thing to think about is always using thin layers. So even with the primer, you're just using a little bit, seeing how that works for you, and then maybe adding a little bit more if you need it. Same thing with foundations. Applying a thin layer is important in every step of your makeup application. So again, starting in the areas of concern, Adding it in. If I have enough product, we'll go to the other side. Again, I haven't worked into my T-zone yet because I don't want that much coverage there. Now I have less product. We can work in it. All right, so. The areas that you don't want to forget about when you are blending your foundation in are your ears, but not too much, just a light layer, and then a little bit down the neck. And depending on your shade match, you may need to go further down the neck, but I haven't really been doing that um, with this foundation. I, I don't think that it's really necessary. Um, but then the other area to think about is up here. You want to blend it into the hairline just a touch so that everything matches. You don't have like a white line there. And I'm just going to keep blending this in until I feel like everything is smoothed out pretty well. And then we'll evaluate how things are looking and if I feel like I need any more coverage anywhere. All right, so if I am wanting more coverage, I can use a little bit more of this foundation in those areas. And then 
once we do concealer, I can always, you know, put it more specifically in areas that I'm wanting to cover. But either way, it's a thin layer every time. I think I have everything blended in the way that I want. The next thing I'm going to do is use a cream highlight and then we're going to conceal. You can skip this part and always highlight later, but what I find is when I highlight before I conceal and set my face with a powder, it just looks very natural. So I'm going to take the Neutrogena Hydro Boost Illuminator and it's a little stick like this and we'll take this little brush and kind of work it into the product and we'll stipple it in on the high points of the cheek. And I do have like an old scar there, but because I haven't concealed it yet, it's perfectly okay for me to highlight in that area. Okay, so the highlighting is done. And the next thing I'm going to do before I conceal is use a little color corrector. And this is the Becca Under Eye Brightening Corrector. And this is light to medium. And this is what it looks like here. And what I've learned with this is it takes the tiniest little bit. So I'm just going to take a little bit on my finger. Just kind of tap my finger in there. And then I'm going to take a brush and work it into the product on the finger. And the reason I'm using a brush, you can use your finger if you'd like, but the reason I'm using a, a brush is because I like to be very specific in where I'm putting it. And my finger is just a little bit too big for that area that I'm looking to correct. And again, a light layer is what we're looking for. So can you see the difference there? It definitely bright brightens it up, especially in that area. Just gonna make sure it's nice and blended. And if I want wanted more, like in this area, I tend to struggle with the darkness. You could always grab, you know, a tiny bit more. But I'm just going to leave it as it is and move to the other eye. The other reason I like to take a brush and work it into the product is it helps kind of warm it up. This primer, or sorry, this corrector is very thick. And it either needs the warmth of your fingers to warm it up, or like I do, I take the brush and I take it into the product that's on my finger in order to really warm it up a little bit so it's not so thick going on to those areas. But now we can conceal. And my trick for concealing, um, which works really well for me because I have very dry under eyes and I don't want to accentuate any texture or fine lines. So what I almost always do, not almost always, always, is I take a little bit of the concealer, which today I'm using the Revlon Candid Antioxidant Concealer, um, which looks like this. And this is in color 010. I try not to go too light. I like it to look like more of a, more like my skin. Um, so I just take that much and we'll grab a fluffy brush. It's a fluffy eyeshadow brush that looks like this. This is the Morphe by Jeffree Star JS5. And we're just going to work that into the brush here. And if I want to be more specific, I can take a more dense, like a smaller and more dense brush. So here's the difference. And I may do that, we'll see. But I just find this way just applies it so nicely and lightly and 
I don't have any issues with any of those things that I mentioned before. I'm just very lightly dusting these areas. Trying not to pull the skin too much. And I find with this concealer that I don't need to set it, um, which is nice. It just won't, doesn't move around. Some concealers that are a little bit creamier, you do need to set so that it won't move or end up building up into those little fine lines that you may have. And again, um, I am going to take a little bit more of that concealer and apply it to the areas that the foundation didn't fully cover as much as I wanted to. So I'm going to take a really small, dense brush. This is the Morphe, Morphe by Jeffree Star JS13. Work it into the brush again on the palette and cover these areas. like a sunspot there. The nice thing about choosing a concealer that is close to your natural color anyway is you can do touch-ups on your face like I just did. If I would have had a lighter concealer, it doesn't really work. Then I would only be highlighting those areas. So like I said, choosing a natural color just makes it easier, but also I think looks more natural and matches the rest of your face very nicely. So the final step to think about is whether or not you need or want to set your face. Now, for me, setting helps things stay in place and it also helps me keep my oils under control. And it just depends on, again, the foundation and what skin type you have. So I'm gonna go ahead and set everywhere. I guess more specifically, it will be in the T-zone and just very lightly on the perimeter. Uh, and I'm going to finish up the rest of my makeup and we'll come back and chat. Just realized I forgot to mention which powder I use to set and Bye Bye Pores. It's the pressed powder from It Cosmetics and it looks like this. So the very last thing that I'm going to talk about is whether or not to use a setting spray. And just for the same reason that I use a setting powder is I want things to last and stay looking the way that they looked just after application, if that's a possibility. So I am gonna be using a setting spray and they make them differently. There's dewy, there's matte, there's just natural, there's um, just long wear. And I'm gonna be using two different ones, which, you know, just like using two different primers, 
you know, to each their own. You don't have to do that. But the first one I'm gonna be using helps the makeup last all day and it will mattify. And then the other one is glowy. Um, so I don't want my whole face to be mattified. I just want the T-zone to be mattified. So for the first setting spray, I'm using the Maybelline Lasting Fix and it's up to 16 hours. It is a matte finish and this is what it looks like. And then for the perimeter, because I do want that to remain dewy, I'm gonna use the Catrice Dewy Glow Fixing Spray, which looks like this. Shake that up. And again, for, for this, spray it everywhere because I want everything to last all day. So everything is done. A quick overview is applying sunscreen and letting it sit for 10 to 15 minutes, determining what kind of skin type you have so that it can help you choose a foundation that's going to work best for you, uh, choosing the right color of foundation, and then what kind of primer is going to work best depending on your skin type and the foundation that you're choosing to use what tool to use, starting with your areas of concern uh, with the heaviest coverage but still blending out really well and then working into the other areas of your face. And don't forget to include the neck, ears, and the hairline. And then setting, you know, choosing what kind of uh, process you wanna have there, what you need to have based on your concerns. So those are all the tips that I have. This is the final look. I hope this was helpful. You know, I've learned all of these things in the past year, like I said, since watching YouTube and getting into makeup, and they've been really helpful. Um, I don't think that I would do as well as I do. I only say that because of, you know, my boyfriend says it looks nice and I feel like I'm particular enough that I'm gonna make sure everything is blended in really well. But again, I wouldn't be able to have done it as well as I think I do it without watching YouTube and learning from all the people that have been doing makeup for many years. And you know, they are makeup artists and so they have really good tips that are very helpful. So again, I hope this was really helpful. If you have any questions about anything that I used, then definitely ask me in the comments below. Uh, if you have any other tips that you like that work really well for you, I would also love to hear that. But um, yeah, I think Christmas just happened and Hanukkah happened uh, a little, you know, a few days before that. So I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday and take care and until next time all right so as you can see it my and that is deciding what tool or tool what tool i i can't i can't say it but without being tool yeah a spin of a light